Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and your old pal, Katie. Hey. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada, and about two and a half years ago, I contacted the Liberace Mansion. It had been once left to just rot away until one man saved it. And they were nice enough to let me come film a video here, show me the progress they had made in putting it back together. And now two and a half years later, they're letting us come back. So today we're gonna see what they've done. Days with Jordan the Lion and Katie begins right now. One of my all time favorite videos was to come here. The man, Martin, who has purchased this house, he actually saw a video of urban explorers exploring this place when it was just abandoned and he couldn't believe it. Came, checked it out and purchased it and has spent years bringing it back to its former beauty. I'm so excited to see what's going on here. And the gates, I mean, my gosh, look at these beautiful entryway gates. Originally, this was two houses. This was a house over here, and then this over here was a house, and Liberace purchased both lots, conjoined them, and made one massive Liberace mansion. Of course, he performed at the Hilton for many years and had people like Barry Manilow and Barbara Streisand as his opening acts, and would entertain his friends here. That's the Moroccan room up there, as a matter of fact. I believe this was the, I think you told me the last time I was here, this is the first registered historical place in this, this area. Liberace Mansion. Liberace's Two Palms. Before we go in, I want to take a look at one of my favorite pieces to the house, which is this fountain right here. I love those doors. Wow. Yeah, we just, I know, I know, I know Yvonne had them, he, he painted them, he decided to paint them black. I think, I think it was different. I don't, I don't think it was black last time you were here. I think it was different. So here's what you would see if you were opening the door for a guest. These little buttons right here. Oh, all the old, uh, yeah. look like uh, doorbells. Yeah. And then this is, Directly above you when you first walk in And when you first come in To mr. Liberace's house. This is what you would see And one of my favorite things about this place was this story. I remember Martin was telling me that this staircase was something that Liberace saw I believe in Paris loved it so much and it was in like a like a strip club basically. He loved it so much, but it was all built in one piece. As you can see, it goes up and then it kind of curls around everything. He had to purchase and move the whole thing as one piece, couldn't disassemble it, and then had to put it in the house and build everything around it. That's what you do <laughs> when you have a very specific taste and you have the money to allow you to do it. I love it. They said they had a lot of uh, plans for things that they're working on right now. They're gonna restore one of the bars upstairs and turn it into kind of like the Western theme that he had it. But with COVID and everything, it kind of slowed down things. There you can see it says, I don't give concerts, I put on a show, Liberace. For some of you that saw the last video, this will be very similar, but there's always things that you miss and I just wanted to come back and see it. Look at that beautiful stained glass. Yeah, if you, uh, if you look up and find the old videos when basically the place had been just kind of abandoned, it's amazing what he was able to do. And he told me that when he came to view the place, it was just like, he was amazed by the the fact that the history of this place, somebody would let it get to that point. And that the realtor was so used to people wanting to see it, but not actually buy it. They didn't even really know what to do when he said he wanted to, to bring it back to life. Now, the other great thing is that the owner has went out of his way to, I believe it at the time of Liberace's death, it was maybe a day or so later, they took photos of 
his house. So they kind of know what their what this used to look like, and he went out of his way to start trying to reacquire Liberace's possessions. I believe the sofa set was one of the things that was original to the house, or it was original to Liberace's collection, as well as, you might not even notice it, but right here, this ashtray and this lighter set, I remember he was very, proud that someone had been gifted that by Liberace and they donated it to the house because they enjoyed what was going on. Look at this place, are you kidding me? Can't you just see them walking through here? All the dogs running around and I mean, it's just, wow. Too much of a good thing is wonderful. <laughs> so much so that you have to remind yourself by putting it on the glass. Of course, candelabras everywhere. Beautiful fireplace. Look at how they decorate it. I mean, that's just amazing with all the flowers and everything. I remember he was pointing out to me because if you notice up here, there's like, you know, a little bit of paint and things like that, a little bit of wear, nail holes and stuff. He said that was character to the house that he wanted to keep because it it kind of demonstrated what it would have looked like when Liberace lived here, which I thought was a cool way of looking at it. You don't have to restore everything. It's nice to see like those kinds of things because that's all hand painted on there. So one of the other great parts of this room were these glass etchings. These were, these were Beardsley's. These were done by one of Oscar Wilde's friends, Aubrey Beardsley. And he had those custom made, look at that. Prospectus. I also have the book that these. Oh, you do? Oh, great. You can see the feet and everything in there. And they found in the book right here where this one is. This is that same image. So we'll check out some more of that glass because it actually extends all the way around. Liberace was a big fan of having uh, mirrors everywhere. There's some more from Salome. Wow, what a room. And this, I remember, this was the one that he told me, I think was the, uh, had been like a World's Fair. It was a very rare. So this, so this is, so this piano is over 200 years, years old, the chicken piano. So, um, yeah, it's a super old piano. We've been told that there's only one person in the country who knows how to tune this. Yeah, I remember that. Because I think he said, yeah, that like one person can tune it because it it doesn't go in traditional. It, it, it does, and he's been and he's been here to tune it because he would come come here at the to the university here. Yeah, and visit the students. And when he did that, he would come over here and visit us and. Actually, he would tune this for us. I think Martin told me this was one of the pianos. They did like a World's Fair, and they used this type of piano for a pyramid. So a lot of them ended up getting destroyed. That's why they're, you know, it's such a collectible. There's not a whole lot of them left. Yeah, they're very hard to find nowadays. And then there's the Liberace Baldwin. And the one that was actually his touring piano as well. Yeah. And I remember the tip, the tip jar just like blew everybody away. That's... <laughs> Liberace's original handmade tip jar. And I also remembered, which I thought was really cool, that he had signed the piano. What a great thing for fans later on, years down the line, to get to see 
Even draw out the piano, his own logo. Imagine how many times, imagine, you know, how many times he would just draw that piano and- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had done that same logo over here, his signature. You can see the Liberace in there. Now, fun fact about the, so I recently found out, so the music notes on this, um, on this, the mirror bar here. Yeah. I recently was able to confirm from somebody from the, one of the fan clubs, so this act, these music notes actually go to one of his songs, I Will Be Seeing You. That makes sense. Knowing him, I figured it had to have, have some kind of a significance. Yeah, it couldn't just be random notes, but that's so cool to see on there. Yeah, because so, someone, because I, I figured it had to go to something. I wasn't sure. And I didn't show this last time. I forgot to show the top of the bar. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we probably had more stuff on top of it last time. Than his... Logo right there as well as name. This was the House of Versailles ceiling. Palace of Versailles. I believe that was what inspired this, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh they took them out because it was a little dangerous to keep glass panels. Oh, so, okay, so these were replaced. They were originally glass. Okay. We don't want people to. Yeah, that makes sense. Break. Yeah. And here's some more of that amazing etching that's on the glass behind the piano. The famous dining room. This one was when we were in here last time, I remember. This is where we were asking Martin if he'd felt any paranormal activity. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah. <laughs> the big one I remember that stuck out in my head was that he said, I go in rooms and see and smell smoke and I don't allow smoking. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> oh, Cause that's an unmistakable smell. Cigarettes or, can you imagine? Dinner guest right here. Katie, what do you think? Can you imagine being a din dinner guest at Liberace's? Cigarette smoke? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's really weird, but then You I smelled just, cigarettes yes, or something? And then I just kind of thought, I'm like, well there's no way anyone would allow smoking in here so I thought I was kind of going crazy until you just said that that's so weird and, and the only one in really in the who works here that smokes is Yvonne and he's not here right now yeah that's really <laughs> crazy oh my gosh that is crazy he's not here and he doesn't smoke during the day he only smokes at night wow. that's so weird that you said that I see I kind of feel it in here this is one of those rooms that I remember just something about this room, you just, you almost feel like he's watching you while you're in here. And the, is this the glass you were telling us that yes. you're gonna put? So, well, we're, well, so the, the current plan is, is because this door, uh, this went out to the garden where the pool was. Yeah. So currently the plan is gonna be, we're gonna get either a, like a picture or like an oil painting or some something that shows what it looked like when, when Liberace, uh, when he lived here. So yeah, that way, that's great. That way people can actually see what it looked like to look outside, and then we're going to put some nice up lighting in it, so that way you, it's a little bit nicer of a view than just a plain wall. That's awesome. That'll be a great experience. And of course, chandeliers everywhere. I feel like every room has a wonderful chandelier. He loved to cook. That's one of the great things about. Liberace as well. It wasn't if you were a dinner guest that he had his cooks make you up something special. He loved to make up holiday meals and cook for people. Used to fly him in to eat for holidays, I remember reading. Oh, yeah, he loved to have people over. And I don't know if Martin told you this, but you know where these, uh, these two closets where the costumes are? Yeah. So these, you act these actually used to be corridors. They used to go from here to the kitchen on the other side of the house. Oh, I didn't know that. So, and there was two of them. That makes sense, so people could come and help serve. Yeah, so and they, there was two of them, so that way there was, um, they're both one-way traffic. So there was the maid to come in one way. Yeah. I love how you utilize them now. You have one of his tuxedos on display over here. So, and these, these were actually uh, donated to us by, actually an old friend of uh, Liberace's. Her name is Eloise. She also just recently passed away, unfortunately. Um, and someone from her family is actually coming by soon to donate several more things of the Liberace's to us. That's great. 
So we're about to get a bunch more things from her. And then what's the story with this? So that's that that's so so that costume that, that's the that's the Polish pink costume. That's what it's called. The Polish pink. Um now Martin told me that he actually wore this on um an Easter an Easter parade. Oh, it that makes out, sense. It came out of a giant Easter egg. Um, <laughs> now I know that his mother was Polish. Yes. Yeah. So I I figured a lot of the Polish influence comes from the fact that his from his Polish influences from his mother's side. Yeah. But what's really cool about the details on these is that, you know, if, if you flip under here, because when he's moving, you know, things like this will move. Yeah. There's even jewels underneath here. So people will oh, still nice. see stuff like that when he's moving around. So it's still incredible the, de the, the attention to detail that they put into stuff like that. And I don't know if you told us, but these chargers are actually original to Liberace as well. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, these these brass chargers here. We have about fifty of these. That's great. These were actually um, sold sold in the the auction that the Liberace Foundation held after Liberace passed away. And much like when you talked about the the, the lighter over on yeah. the coffee table when someone brought, saw what we were doing and they brought it back here, the same thing happened with these. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear people do that. So yeah, they brought these over and they wanted it to be here. Um, they felt like it belonged here with us. I think they do. They look great here on display right behind the and we try table. To, we try to use them as much as we can for events so that way they don't get tarnished. Oh, that's that's cool. <laughs> so if you have your wedding here, you can so, use those. And uh, we, we actually have, a, well, in October we have a Liberace fan club coming, coming over to do an event and we're probably going to use these for them. That's <laughs> great. That's so cool, you guys. I noticed at the table settings there's like a little gift box. I wonder what that was all about. Well, Yvonne likes to put little little gifts thing on, on his on the table settings. That's great. Seems like a very Liberace thing. Yeah. I don't think I noticed last time I was here, but this has like a a genie lamp right there in the dead center. It's kind of interesting. Well, it's, it's it's funny when you go through the through the houses. There's all so many different kind, different influences from so many different places throughout the entire house. Uh, these these ones are these are a lot of things that we've uh, we found in you know just in, in auction, just pieces we found all over cool. that kind of go. There's a, a lot of the um, furniture that we've we've found, you know, much like um, you know Jordan Estate and stuff that we've found to kind of go go with with uh, Liberace's stuff or what he would have had. Now we'll work our way. We've already been in here and shown you all of this. So now we'll work our way through. And these were the pillars that he imported? Were those the Greek pillars? Yes, yes he had these imported from Greece. He has, there's four more, four more of them on the front, in the front outside. I'm sure you saw those, but they have, yeah. but they have uh, but the ones on the outside, they have they have the Corinthian style on the top, and the ones outside. Oh, okay. But, but what's so um, significant about these those these from uh, so you know this house was built in the '60s, and during that time in Greece, they had put an embargo on stuff like this. So people kind of wonder how he made it, and it was a big deal when they brought these. Yeah, you know, I bet. Brought these in. So, I mean, I'm sure Liberace threw a bunch of money. <laughs> money talks. Yeah, exactly. Money Back talks. then, especially without. Yeah. And you know the whole neighborhood. You know, they they dropped these in by helicopter. So they so there was a big. It was a big deal when they brought these. They brought these, wow. these things in. <laughs> and this was all the connect connection area, yeah. right, from so the this, two houses. This spot, yeah, this is the spot where um, the two houses were conjoined together. And you could tell that by standing here. You notice the ceiling right there and the ceiling right there are two different heights. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can see that the ceiling on that side throughout the whole house on that side is a much different height. It's much higher. This was that great player piano, wasn't it? Yes. The still, work, it still works. I love it. it. Still works if you want me to play it. Yeah, <laughs> please do. I love it. I love player pianos. <laughs> Signed picture from the garage. All right. Over it. Thank <laughs> you. 
We'll come back and go down through here, but since this is the split in the house, we're gonna go through kind of the divide. That takes us to the event center where the pool used to be. Liberace's name on the glass, I love that. So you know, also, cause you know how I, I mentioned that um, where those two closets were in the dining room, where that's where the corridors were that went to the kitchen. This yeah. That's actually where those corridors passed through. Oh, okay, okay. And so originally when Martin purchased the house, this interest wasn't here. Oh, okay. So they had actually created it. So they knocked down the corridors to create this more central entrance into the bar. Room. Okay. Because originally, when they bought the house, the two there was two entrances to the ballroom. That was in the dining room and in Liberace's bedroom. But in, but in order to make the house flow better as an event venue, they closed off those entrances and then just made this. Room. Okay, that makes sense. So they close. So and uh, I mean that one. I think a couple things you can tell is you notice know, that the tile is completely different in here. Yeah. So it's from the rest of the house. So you can tell it's been redone here. And then I actually really like this that they have a case of kind of the old memorabilia that you could have gotten like the Liberace gift shops and stuff like that. That's great. I love that kind of stuff. Is this so? This is where the pool used to be, correct? Yes. yes. And and I, you know, I know, in my last video, some people are like, "Oh, he needs to put the pool back in," or "Why did he fill it in?" He did not fill it in. It was actually the people that bought the house before him. Yes, that's correct. If I remember right, it was uh, Ted Turner's brother had been one of the former owners, and I think he was the one that people had said had filled in the Liberace pool here. But I love this. The steps over here. So yeah, that is a piece. That, that is still original. That was yeah. the terrace that was, that was here. These, these are actual, real, original Liberace Terrace key steps. That, that goes into the kitchen. <laughs> that goes into the kitchen. That is so cool. And then, of course, this was... Martin had a marble piano made. Well, in 2019, uh, there was a tile company. It was a uh, Emser Tile. They were holding a client appreciation event, and the same the same day of their event was actually the same day as Liberace's 100th birthday. So to uh, to honor that, honor Liberace's birthday, they wanted to um, they agreed to furnish a piano with their tile. So we That's assist amazing. them. We assist them with that. So that we use their marble tile to furbish this piano. I love it. And this piano was actually on that stage for that for that event. This thing is super heavy. I bet. Like, like, <laughs> just to get it. <laughs> One heck of an event center, though. What do you think, Katie? That's beautiful. You haven't even seen the amazing piano on the stage. They have another piano that's completely glammed out. Again, even though this wasn't here when he lived here, I mean, you just feel like you could see Liberace just walking right out onto that stage. It's just so perfect. Leaving the event center and going back in where they have created that new opening back to the player piano that divides the house now this was the palace of versailles hall of mirrors correct there we go look at this I just personally, I mean, it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. I just can't imagine who would want to see themselves that much <laughs> walking around a room. No, only Liberace. Yeah, I guess. I guess if you look as good as Liberace was, was dressed and jeweled out and everything, I guess you would. Man. Just such a beautiful room to pass through. 
Katie, what do you think? It's so much to take in. It's amazing. There's more of that same type of ceiling. This was my favorite part the first time I came because I remember that Liberace intro that you can, I mean, you can find it on YouTube of like the camera catching him in the, the hot tub back there. And of course, I think my favorite part of the whole house are the ceilings, the murals on the ceilings and that, that all starts in here. So there's the fountain that takes you to the famous swan head jacuzzi. <laughs> it was great when I toured this last time, he was like insistent. He's like, you gotta get in there and take a photo. <laughs> I was like, that was so cool. But this, so look oh above God. us. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Shock and awe right there, huh? She had no clue. I love this. A lot of this, he did the Sistine Chapel in his bedroom and even hired one of Michelangelo's relatives. So that was Liberace's bedroom. And then that great, look at those. <laughs> those are great. So when we were here before, he told us that they found that this drawer had a false bottom and that there was actually Liberace jewelry left in there. They eventually found. What a treasure that would have been, huh? I didn't get dressed like this to go unnoticed. Oh, and there's the shower. Beautiful shower, too. That's just too much, man. That is so cool. Oh, he knew what he was doing. He was checking himself out. No, it's like that's his little joke that will stay there forever because he had to have known that that would kind of like startle someone who wasn't expecting it. I'm just surprised that somebody like vandals or something over time of this place kind of being uninhabited that people didn't destroy that or try and add to it and deface it. So this was his bedroom. I remember his bed would have been right directly in front of us. And that's a fireplace, a glass fireplace. But then again, of course, look at the ceiling. That's just incredible. This is opulence at its finest. It really is. You know, it, it, like it bothers me when I post anything Liberace or Elvis and people say all that money and what did it get them? I say a lot of enjoyment. Look, yeah. they got to live out their dream. They got to live in their dream. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at the story. I mean, this is, you're looking at, okay, <laughs> right here. You're looking at what he would have seen laying from bed, so. You know, take that in, <laughs> Scott Michaels. Gosh, this is so cool. Katie, what do you think? I mean, isn't that amazing? It is amazing. To think that he went out of his way to hire one of Michelangelo's relatives to, to do this. Wow.
And of course, right in the corner of the room, a very small piano. Very small, not like a opulent grand piano, nothing with sequins or mirrored or anything. I guarantee he would have loved knowing that people were touring this room later on in life, oh, you know? absolutely. Oh, he even put his mark on it right there. Yeah, but it's signature right mm -hmm. there, Stefano Angelo Falk. Yeah, as you're leaving the room. I mean, I'm amazed in what in the condition that this this stayed in about all the so years. Did they have to he must have used really nice paint and everything. There you can see where he would have painted over the vent. Yeah, it's in remarkably great shape. Wow. So cool that you guys make this available occasionally for people to see. Not get yourself in a in shot. <laughs> Such an interesting place for a fireplace. Because it's not against a wall and it's like you know. In the middle of the room. Yeah, and it went and if you're laying in bed over here and it's coming out going this way, it's kind of an interesting way to do it. He probably spent a lot of time sitting over here though. So the way he had his room set up more is that so his bed was over there, but he had like more like chase lounges. Oh, okay. Laid up over here. Okay, that totally makes sense. Absolutely would make sense. Love that piece of art. It's made out of plywood and then the, I didn't notice it last time I was here, but the bow tie's made out of nails. Yeah. And that, my friends, is how you furnish a mansion in Las Vegas when you're Liberace. <laughs> wow. You still have the upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. We haven't even got up to the Moroccan room or <laughs> any of that. Yeah, you go, go up the Moroccan room. Oh, I'm excited. We have put a couple new, a couple new, new pieces of furniture in the garage. So now we're going up the stairs, that famous stairwell. So that's the top of that crazy custom staircase that he moved. I love it. The staircase and, that he literally built the second floor just so we can have the staircase. Yeah, you gotta love it. <laughs> I'm sure he told you that story, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the, he said that was his rehearsal room? Yes. So this room used to be his rehearsal room, but now that's our office. Yeah. And Back here, this is where I told you where the, the bar is, is going to be. Yeah, the Wild West theme bar. Yeah, because because these floors, um, if, in case he didn't tell you, so these 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 floors right here, he actually got from a saloon in California oh. during the uh, during the that was open during the Gold Rush era. Very and cool. And when the saloon was closing, the Barashi bought them from him, and they kept all of the original planks along with the original nails. Oh wow, <laughs> the original nails. Jeez. But you're gonna put that right over there, that'll be great. So we're all, we have that, so yeah, the bar's behind there, so we have that in the place. Mama slot machines. The Moroccan room, wow. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh. Some places, I've seen interviews with him where he said this room got sometimes just ungodly hot. <laughs> Yes. I can imagine. This room gets pretty hot. Well, we have the air, we have the air conditioner on here today. <laughs> the tiling is the thing that blew me away when he told me that some of it was missing and when he, they looked on the back, they were able to find the numbers yeah. and the original tile maker to match it. That is just so rad. Oh yeah. Look at this, look at the floor. I love. I, I, I think these. And I, it, I think we're fortunate that they were able to find the manufacturer for that because I think the copper tile absolutely makes makes this room. Yeah, yeah, it's unlike anything else I've ever seen. Before the everything was built, he would have had some pretty good views out here, I'd imagine. Oh yeah. Well, at one point, 
when the Mirage was living here in this neighborhood, this would have been the best view of the strip. Oh yeah, yeah, because the strip's right over here, yeah. Of course, has a piano up here. Yeah, you can see the strip over there. Up on this glass, it says, nobody will believe you unless you believe in yourself. Liberace. I know a couple of new pictures. We had, we had these, these things in here. And oh, yeah. We had yeah. those in, there, in here as well. The hanging lamps and yeah. things. I like those. Look at that fireplace. Wow. Take that in. Jeez. Just the colors beaming off of that. You know, another fun fact about the copper tiles, tiles on here, you notice that the, the patina on all the tiles is, you know, they all glare a little bit differently, but they still all blend. Yeah. Together. That's because the, the sun hits every, every tile at a slightly different angle. So they all look a little bit differently, but still all blend together. That's awesome. Can imagine the conversations that were had up here. Well, this was like the after party. After the Barack show, this is where they'd come up for, for after show cocktails. Just kind of getting a view. I wonder who would have been the bartender for these soirees. Well, most of the time it would have been. Um, I, I believe it would have been his Pieta Butler. Oh, um, yeah. But sometimes Liberace did it himself. I can imagine. They get him back here making drinks. There's a Liberace. Look at this piece. Wow. I love that. Yeah, I think this would be my favorite room as well. Now we're leaving the Moroccan room. Kind of don't want to ever leave that room in a way. <laughs> and then going back down the staircase. Liberace was actually one of uh, three people in Las Vegas that had a, a residential gambling license. They don't give them out anymore. Um, but they gave them out to a few high profile people that um, wanted to be able to have some kind of gambling in their home, but didn't want the publicity of they didn't want the publicity of gambling. Howard Hughes and Frank Sinatra. Oh yeah. wow, that's cool. Now, when Liberace and, and Howard Hughes passed away, their licenses went went with them, and nobody was was allowed to to have them. Frank Sinatra he lost his due to his um, his dealings with the mob. Yeah, and I believe the 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 straw that broke the camel's back was a. Um, a scandal that happened in this casino in Reno. You know, it's it's funny. I had I I I've actually fielded a lot of calls and said, "Oh yeah, I watched you know I, I watched a film from Jordan Jordan Alive. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's how I heard about this place. And that same glass is original for the house as well. Gosh, that's incredible. And that is our day here at the Liberace Mansion. I'm moving in. We even get to sign the Liberace Mansion guest book with a feathered pen. So they do have tours available, but just make an appointment as far in advance as you can to make sure that when you come out here, if, if you wanna take a tour, they can work with you. But also check this out because this plaque gives a good bit of the history and why this house is significant. And it also gives a very little amount of credit to the owner now who I think deserves a lot of credit. I mean, without him, it was with this neighborhood and everything is only a matter of time before this place would have been bulldozed or turned into a drug den. So thank you, Martin Ravenhill. That's, I mean, you, you really deserve a lot of credit. All right, Katie, your first tour, maybe our last tour of Liberace Mansion. You never know. What the heck did you think? It's absolutely beautiful. He had such eclectic taste, but he made everything in the house exactly how he wanted it. So it's just, it's a cool little slice into his life. It's great Not that only it's that, 
a slice into like old Vegas that is like slowly dying away that mm. you you really can't get this experience hardly anywhere else so thank you to the the homeowner here thank you to Liberace for creating this beautiful place and yeah we're gonna call it a day yeah. all right my friends I hope you enjoyed our little update this place is amazing if you're coming to Vegas make it one of your like destination spots it's just incredible. Thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. See you all next time from somewhere else in Las Vegas. Goodbye. <laughs>